Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Fire Spitter mod, which was originally made by forum user SNJO, but has been most recently updated by user Bob Palmer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a number of fun parts for making planes, and specifically propeller-based planes, as well as helicopters. So let's jump into the space plane hangar and have a look at what we do get and now I should mention off the bat here this is a bit of an outdated mod as the most recent version is technically for 1.6 but all the parts still do work in the current 1.7 game uh, with a few minor oddities but all in all it's still a very solid mod and one of those I've used for years and is a prerequisite for a lot of the mods we've looked at in the past and for some reason I've never shown it off on this channel, so here we are! Now let's turn on, of course, Janitor's Closet, just leaving on Fire Spitter, and we'll start in the Command Pod section with the uh, first one here, my personal favorite, the Biplane Cockpit! It is just wonderful because, well, not only is it an open cockpit, but it's got the cool Kerbal there, and the interior view is actually through this particular Kerbal's eyes, so you can see all the dials are right there. It is pretty darn nice and does have a number of fun texture options for you to make just the right biplane you're looking for, which is always good. Now, as for its other stats, it has a crew capacity of one, minimum of one crew member to operate. It does, of course, have a crew report and liquid fuel. Now, the next one we'll look at here is the fighter inline cockpit. Now, this one, another nice inline one and uh, a nice internal Kerbal this time rather than, you know, exposed to the elements and this one once again a one crew capacity minimum of one crew member to operate does have a crew report and electric charge and again we have a number of textures for you to play with now the next one we have here that we'll show off is the fs 20c or is that too Oh, see, I don't know. Attack helicopter cockpit. And this one can hold up to two Kerbals, minimum of one to operate, has a reaction wheel SAS crew report, and electric charge, and also does have an attachment point right there on the nose. Now, the next one we'll look at here is the FS 2CP helicopter cockpit, which again holds two Kerbals, a minimum of one to operate, does have built in lights, reaction wheel crew report, and electric charge and is pretty darn nice and I do like the uh, spotlights on the front there they are quite nice and useful and all in all just a nice looking cockpit and I should actually mention uh, before I forget all of these do have internal views which is always handy and the final cockpit we have here is the bomber cockpit and this one is just amazing and again internal view from each of these individual seats here it does also have an attachment point up at the top there for you to perhaps say put something from BD Armory there and does have a number of textures here for the side of it which is quite nice and you can even open the windows there if you want a little bit of a draft coming in always good but that uh, those are all the different cockpits all very fun now let's head down to the fuel tanks category where we also have some engines in here one of the minor oddities I mentioned uh, the first one being the helicopter main rotor and this baby if we pop it on a sideways there is well a helicopter rotor and it's wonderful now you'll notice when you do have it selected here there is a lovely and helpful line pointing to forward to show you exactly which direction you should put this helicopter blade so you know your helicopter actually works correctly and beyond that day uh, just you know fun little engine here a thrust of a 50 rpm of 600 and requires liquid fuel and air intake we also do have a tail engine again with that nice handy line to show you where exactly you need to put the tail propeller there and so that again your helicopter controls correctly so there we go let's pop both those off we then have a bomber fuselage holding liquid 
liquid fuel, and it's just a nice a large thing there. We then have a uh, oblong multi-tank, which is in the same size here as the biplane cockpit, and this one you can change the tank that it does hold between different setups, so you can grab what you need resource-wise, and of course also does have some textures. Now the next one we have here is another helicopter main rotor, this one with max thrust of 80 RPM of 300, and is the coolest one of the helicopter rotors in my opinion because it freaking folds up, and look at that. It's gorgeous. Oh, I do love that thing. And of course, I actually didn't mention it on these ones, but the RPM is adjustable, so you can mess with that. Now, uh, next thing we have here is an air tank. So if you don't have any actual air intakes on your aircraft, you can actually put air tanks to compensate for it, but they are a resource and only hold a hundred air intake in them. So quite fun to have those. Next thing we have here is a drop tank mount, which is a decoupler, or a separator rather, which works in tandem with this particular drop tank, which holds liquid fuel. You just pop it right on there, and you can change this between different setups of uh, whatever resource you are in need of but once you're done with it you can just drop it off and you're good to go losing all that weight we then also have a useful jerry can holding liquid fuel as well as an oxidizer tank holding oxidizer and just some fun little additions there let's pop those off and head into the engines category where we've got all the propeller engines for your glorious planes and the first is the biplane engine with a max thrust of 25 rpm of 600 has a built-in air intake and is just a cool little biplane engine there we go now it doesn't quite match up with the fuselage of the biplane but that is for a reason for another part we have later on now the next engine we have here is the nose mounted engine the fs1 en which does have a built-in alternator a max thrust of a 45 kilonewtons there and is just a fun nice big propeller now, then after that, we have the FS1 EN. E nose mounted electric engine so if you don't feel like using liquid fuel and air intake you can instead just go electric and there we are just another nice propeller there we then have the FS1 FPE folding electric propeller and I actually didn't mention on the last engine uh, the electric one it is 40 kilonewtons of thrust this one a 35 with its uh, lovely electric engine and of course having the deployable propellers which uh, you know me I'm a sucker for deploy animation, and that just makes me happy. Then after that, we have the Lancaster engine, which is big and doing 150 kilonewtons of thrust with liquid fuel and air intake, and, and look at it, it's gorgeous. We then after that have the uh, FS1 LEG Lancaster, again with 150. Uh, this one having a built-in wheel, as you can see here, for all your landing needs, which is always useful. We then have an oblong tail jet, which produces 135 kilonewtons of thrust and is just a nice little inline engine there. Very good, very useful. Now, next after that, we have the FS1 PRE Customizable Electric Electric propeller engine with a max thrust of 20. Just a small, nice little electric engine, which you can adjust things like the blade length here, the number of blades, the engine size, if you so desire to make it longer or shorter, and then the usual RPM adjustments and max throttle here, which is pretty fun and a nice little addition having a cool little engine like this. We then have the large VTOL engine producing 150 kilonewtons of of thrust and this one of course just you know being a nice VTOL engine there and finally we have the swamp engine producing 45 kilonewtons of thrust and useful for any boats it oh god I had this problem earlier it doesn't attach to cockpits but it will attach to uh, tanks I believe uh, there we go yes excellent so you can install one of those swamp engine fans now that is it for the engine category on to command and control we do have an air brake here I actually probably should put on one of these uh, fuel tanks just in case we have that 
problem with anything else. There we go. We have a nice, useful air brake for you to use. We then also have a helicopter fenestrum. There we go. Excellent. A nice back end for your helicopters. We then have an ASAS gyroscope, which serves as an SAS system. Excellent. We then have the nose ASAS unit, which goes in tandem with the attack helicopter cockpit. It goes onto the front front attachment point there. And yeah, it's just a nice little SAS system, which actually, let's, uh, there we go. Now it's a bit more visible. Perfect. And on to the next, we have the trim adjustment gadget. Which is pretty cool. You can pop this onto any plane and you can toggle a pitch, roll, and yaw and actually do trim adjustments either in here or in flight, which is handy if you're having a little bit of issues with any of your particular planes. So a very useful little gadget. And then we have the water launch system, which is also a very useful gadget. What this will do is actually override the uh, takeoff location when you hit launch so that you can actually put say a boat in the water automatically without having to cheat it over there with some other means and you can select between different positions either the default or landing on the runway or the uh, rocket launch pad or you can select the beach the island beach the island hangar the island run blah, 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 runway, there's words, and the North Polish, which I have no idea where that one is. But yes, you can also then uh, adjust some altitude here and positioning so that you can get it to where you need it to be. So OA is a fun and a very useful tool. Now next in structural, we have a number of fun parts. We've got a big bomb bay here for the uh, bomber cockpit parts. There we are with doors that'll open up. Not the nicest of textures inside, pretty bare, but it is still a useful bomb bay. We then have the bomber tail, which we can pop right on there. Excellent. We then have another oblong structure, half length of the fuel tank, but of course with no fuel, but you can switch up the textures. We then have an oblong nose for you to pop on there. Always good to have. We then have a longer oblong nose. Excellent. And then from there, we have an oblong rounded nose, so a little bit shorter, a nice little nubbin. And then we have the oblong to round adapter. And this is when you can switch to those uh, engines that were more round rather than oblong so that they can convert between the two. Or, of course, if you want to attach one of these to a rocket, you can do that too. We then have another one of the oblong adapters here with uh, different texture options. We then have another small oblong adapter node. There we are. And then after that, we have an oblong tail once more with the various texture options. And then a tail boom here, which is in the oblong shape, but just a different sort of uh, look to it. And also has a different variants, as you can see here, which is pretty interesting. Good and useful, of course, for helicopters. Then after that, we do have helicopter landing skids. Always useful. We then have the biplane tail fuselage, which has a number of fun texture options that I do enjoy, whichever you're wanting to go for for your plane. And then we have some sea floats. We have a sea float here with a landing gear, so your seaplane can also land on a runway. We then have a seaplane nose float right there, a seaplane straight float, a seaplane float strut. So basically, you attach this to your plane and then the floats off of that as such. And then we also have a tail piece, which is pretty much, I mean, identical to the nose piece, uh, except, of course, it does have a nice little control surface there. And you can also turn off the splash effects if you are a little bit annoyed by them, which, you know, can be useful with any sort of waterborne aircraft. And then after that, we have a nothing in coupling payload, but in aerodynamics, we have a number of wings, which we're just gonna kind of breeze through here quick because it's, well, it's just a lot of wings. So we have the uh, bomber wing. We have another style of a bomber wing here. We then have an engine uh, mount, which is radially attached there. We then have a fighter jet elevator, a fighter jet rudder, very nice looking, and then a fighter jet wing, nice and big there. I do love the different options on these things, just the, uh, the colors to them and textures, very fun. We then have an oblong nose intake there, 
always useful, and very useful for, of course, that oblong uh, jet engine. We then have a tall winglet. There we are right there. Then a another tall wing right here. And then another large tail wing over here. And then a another wing section here. So just a lot of useful wings. I mean, it is a mod centering around planes, so it makes sense. Now let's uh, pop off some of these things, because, well, it's getting a little bit crowded. As we then have biplane parts, specifically for, of course, building, you know, biplanes. Where we have things like the center piece here for the biplane. Oh, is nice. We then have an elevator section right here. We then have a fun tail rotor right here. And then the main wing section here. Then a wing, rounded wing tip a bit right there. A short wing here, and then another wing tip, but not quite as uh, wide as the other. And all of which do have a different texture options, just like the other biplane parts, for you to make just the right biplane you want. Which is wonderful. We then have nothing technically in ground, but we'll see some ground things in a moment. Then we have nothing in thermal, electrical, communication, science, but in utility, we have those things, which should have been in these previous categories. Again, meant for 1.6 six little bit odd but you know what the parts still work and in here we have a fighter jet landing gear which is quite nice there we go a very good looking landing gear we then have a much larger bombing landing gear and then a fighter tail right there always useful we then do have a passenger fuselage for putting in some kerbals and has a nice door and ladder there we then have a helicopter landing gear right there a swiveling helicopter landing gear right there a very large odd looking battery right there and then a biplane wheel so there, excellent, a little bit of low tech of a wheel, but useful. A biplane single landing gear, right there. And then finally, a biplane tail skid. And there we are, those are all of the parts for Fire Spitter. All very fun, very useful. Some of them definitely showing their age, but others like the biplane pieces, oh, they're still just so much fun to play with. So let's actually open up a craft I made earlier to show off all the different cockpits. So let's load that up and head out to the launch pad, which never mind, I already have one out there. <laughs> I forgot about that. And let us turn the camera here and jump in over here where we have have all the lovely nice cockpits for this mod now we'll start off with my personal favorite the biplane one because I mean come on it's just wonderful you're open to the elements these are in fact working gauges here and it's just a, a very good view now next we have the fighter cockpit with a lovely picture of your family always nice we then have the attack helicopter cockpit with uh, this particular view here and then the rear Kerbal right here with all the nice little uh, buttons and switches. We then have the other helicopter cockpit, I'm forgetting the name of, with a Crate Little Helicopters for Dummies book, which is just amusing. And of course, our second seat being right next door. And then of course, we're into the bomber cockpit. And look at all that glorious wood. It's just a beautiful old school cockpit there. Our uh, co-pilot and of course, the nose gunner. There we are, excellent, and those are all of the cockpit bits, so let us uh, head back out to the Space Center and load up another plane I made to show off two things. One, plane parts, because, well, we're making planes here. And two, that really fun water gizmo where we can make a plane or boat or whatever actually start in the water. Oh god, what did I actually call this thing? Didn't I? Ah, float plane. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it is just a simple little float plane using the biplane parts, and I attach that water system. So yes, clear the runway, excellent, and this should pop us into the water rather than on the runway. Now you saw us select the runway, but now there we are out here in the water. And we have ourselves a lovely little biplane with some drop tanks, and of course our fun Kerbal here who we have the internal view for which just is made all the more fun by having the biplane wings. Now, unfortunately, 
Oh, uh, my plane design is kind of bad, and I can't actually take off from the water. If we do uh, throttle up here and start moving along, we'll start moving at about 16 meters per second maximum is what I got. So, um, yeah, I didn't design this thing great. So what we're going to do is actually cut the engine and actually just cheat ourselves into the air to show these parts flying. So let's go to the uh, ship lander. Don't force rotation, current, and you know what? Let's give ourselves some uh, space just in case I crash horribly. And land. All right, let us throttle up our engine, turn on SAS, and drop the plane. There we go, and let's see how this thing actually flies. I haven't actually flown it yet. I've only tried to take it off from the water, which was unsuccessful. But yes, yeah, so there we go. It actually is flying pretty darn nice. So that is the Fire Spitter mod, a classic that's been around since 2013. So it's it's definitely a mod that is made of the rounds, and pretty much, if you play this game, you've probably installed at some point for one reason or another, probably typically because it was a prerequisite for something else and still I can't believe I've never looked at it in its uh, or on its own rather before but it is a fun wonderful little mod that even though it's a little bit outdated still does function perfectly in 1.7 and uh, it's just a fun little thing to play with so if you'd like to check it out for yourself which I would certainly recommend you go and do you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual and I'll actually include two links one to the forum post and one to GitHub where you can actually find the most recent version, which as I said is compatible for uh, 1.6. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next episode, but until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one, and there go the drop tanks. Yay! Later, folks! <laughs>